think we've got two quick questions. Who, who, uh, who, who ordered the charge on, on uh, Ford Wagner? Who ordered the charge on Ford Wagner? Do you know anything about, about that? Emmett, come on up. Emmett, come on up. General in charge. The general in charge uh, at that time was General Strong, uh, and I'm not sure, the movie portrays that, that Shaw actually volunteered, and I don't remember, uh, First Sergeant, if that is entirely accurate. But there are, uh, in one book, which I can't remember, uh, I read that he was um, asked, uh, General Strong um, asked him to do it, but then there are conflicts saying that he volunteered, Colonel Robert Gouchard volunteered the men, I mean his regiment to, to be the first in battle for Vo Fort Wagner. So I'm not 100% sure, but I did read a book and it said that. And if you remember the book that we talked about, you don't recall it, but we did we talk about it. Um, so I'm not 100% sure on that. But Strong was the general. Yes, General Strong, okay. definitely. Did, did they expect this would be successful or did yeah. they know they were just sending them all to be slaughtered? They, they knew that this was going to be a, a highly suicidal, if I can say that, um, um, attack. The, the point was for the first leading regiment to, to go in and, and hopefully soften up the, Confederate, uh, the Confederates and then the rest of the troops would be able to come in. We actually, thank you, thanks to uh, Tim Ms. Brent, if you guys want to come up later on, we do have a map of the beach and of the fort um, in Charleston Harbor, South Carolina, where it was, and you can see on that map where the uh, high water mark is, where the low water mark is, and where the troops had to get from where they were on the beach to the fort was a very narrow strip of land. Uh, so only one regiment could go in. Otherwise, they would have had more troops going in. They had uh, the Navy in the harbor was sending shells in at the fort to try to weaken them again as the 54th went in. But they knew that they, the first regiment was going to be pretty much a sacrificial uh, regiment. And that's what um, is, is really impressive, uh, among other you know, uh, uh, factors with that with that battle that they knew they were going into certain death. They so knew it was well defended. They were going uphill to get to the top of the fort. They also knew there was uh, they couldn't attack it. I'm so, okay, okay. They also knew that beside it was well defended, and they had a lot of artillery up there that could get them. There was a lot of open space before they can get even to the point where they can start climbing. And they also knew that the the angle of attack to get there was very little. They didn't have a lot of places to get it from the left to right flank, left flanks, in center. They could only go a certain way, so they knew it was just not going to be pretty by the time the morning came. So, um, One last thing I want to ask. Um, 1865 Civil War ends. Today, President Obama, tell me about the 54th from uh, 1865 to 2008 and beyond the future of America to Obama. Can you, can you give me, I know it's a long loaded question, but give me a relationship of what the 54th did till today. John got me with my notes over there by my bag, so I'm gonna have to come off the cuff a little bit. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about this evening, and Gerard, you can certainly chime in and help me if you like. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, is that uh, this battle was, um, as, as the gentleman asked the question, did they expect it to be successful? No. Was it successful? Yes. It was, it was a highly successful failure, if I can say that. And the reason why I say that is that the losses were heavy. Uh, they did not take the fort. You will hear, uh, unfortunately, at the end of the movie, they say that the fort was never taken. The fort was taken a couple of days later, um, and the 54th was there for that. Um, but on that day, the attack was unsuccessful. The assault, the initial assault on Battery Wagner was unsuccessful. What was successful about that was that America's eyes were open. Before this, you have to remember, uh, and I'm not going to use the N-word, but that was very commonly used at that time, especially in the South, we were considered lazy. We were considered shiftless. Uh, blacks at that time were given menial tasks. Even once the 54th was, was put together and they went down South, supposedly to fight, they were used to dig latrines. You hear in the movie Glory, somebody says in, in passing to the black troops, go dig a latrine. Literally, that's what their job was for the very beginning uh, of their, their time in 1863 in the war. This was a huge experiment to actually put muskets in the hands of black soldiers and actually engage them in a battle. America's eyes were open that, one, blacks could fight just as well as white soldiers. They could be just as brave with the dire um, straits that they were facing in that particular battle, low chance of success, but they didn't waver. 
Uh, and I think the, the movie is over-dramatized at some points. If you get a sense of that in the little clip that we showed, I hope, um, that even after their, their leader was shot, and that actually is, is accurate, Shaw was shot going up the parapet, and the men followed um, and went into the, into the fort. Sergeant Carney became the first African-American, although it took him 37 years to actually receive his medal. That's another story. Uh, but the first African-American to win the Medal of Honor wasn't called the Congressional Medal of Honor, just the Medal of Honor at that time. Uh, so, I'm getting myself off track a little bit. But to us, and, and, and my reenactors I think will, will back me up, for us, July 18th is uh, a holiday. That's a national holiday for us because the date of that battle, July 18th, 1863, was a date that really changed um, America's perception of blacks in a lot of ways. And throughout our history, whether it was my grandfather and others who fought in World War II or other of America's wars, blacks have fought every war from the, from the French and Indian wars up until now in, in Iraq and, and Afghanistan. And every time, um, and I, I would venture to say even now, are people that are, are laying their lives on the line and going out and sacrificing in the face of fire from the enemy, um, they're opening up America's eyes to the equality of the black man. You still ha will have soldiers, I'm sure, in the army that have never seen black people, or have not lived around black people. So the perceptions that they've heard, the prejudices that they've heard from books or from movies or from wherever else, those are changed every time black Americans, Americans, join in American causes and stand side by side with other Americans to do what America needs to do. Um, so again, for us, July 18th was really, uh, it is a holiday and we, we take the celebration very seriously um, and we do something every year at that time. Before these guys finish up, I just want to add a couple of quickie things. Uh, when you mentioned a, a, a member of the 54th in Watertown, that also brings to mind that if you ever go to Lynn at the Grand Army of the Republic Hall up there, they have these 1240 photographs of all the Civil War uh, North Shore veterans that fought in the war and they're all up in the ceiling there in the third floor, beautiful place. Two of those happen to be from the 54th Mass also. But I also want to remind everybody, keep watching out for all the ads and whatever you see in newspapers or wherever else. If you love history, uh, Emmett and his people and uh, my group of Civil War uh, guys in my round table and uh, Joe's uh, friends at the uh, National Archives, we're gonna be doing a couple of things next year. Uh, working on a lot of things. We're going to be celebrating Lincoln's Bicentennial, of course. We're also going to celebrate Black Heritage Month uh, in February. I'm going to do a program. We're going to do a couple of other things. So stay tuned. Keep watching. It's a great bunch of people, a great bunch of men and women. Um, and it's a great, a lot of great history. A lot of great history. Stay with history. So we're not... I just want to leave you all with a little something that, that was given to me. And it speaks a lot of truth. It starts with Crispus Attucks. He fell so that Mrs. Rosa Parks could sit. She sat so that Dr. Martin Luther King could march. Dr. Martin Luther King, he marched so Obama could run. And now that Obama has run, our children and our grandchildren can now fly. And I just wanted to leave that something, a little tidbit for you. Emma, top that, huh? <laughs> I can't even top that. <laughs> um, as a reenactor, I've been a reenactor for almost 10 years, and I true wholeheartedly um, love what I'm doing. This is um, something we're not getting paid for. We do this voluntarily, and um, it. I think if I didn't do this, I know that I wouldn't have met a lot of people that I've met in my life. For once, um, for we did something in New Hampshire in 2000. Um, New Hampshire celebrated, finally celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday. And the keynote speaker was Yolanda King, Martin Luther King's daughter. And she passed now, she passed last, last year. But so many other people that we've met, we've met um, a host of people. And the things that we do, we open the eyes to a lot of people about the, about the Civil War, the black soldier that fought in the Civil War, and just... The, the soldier itself, himself, and the women too that helped. The women were uh, a, a vast 
uh, they, they were there for us. And without the women, we couldn't be where we are today. And we want to say we thank you, women. Uh, the things, what we do, we, um, we not only do this presentations, we, have the color, we do color guard, honor guard, we do parades, we, we go to schools, do living histories from kindergarten to college and universities and, and businesses also. And the best part about this is we fight the Confederates. We camp out and we fight and it's beautiful. I truly enjoy that part. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for inviting us here. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess I'll just leave you with this, and again, not to, I, I can't top uh, what, what Brenda um, left you guys with, but I would just say that, that we are um, really excited, and there is a lot of apathy, unfortunately, uh, about the president, and, and there are a lot of people who will meet in, in various communities who um, are kind of disillusioned about politics and about our politicians and about what they can do. Uh, but to have a president who ran on unity, to have a president who ran on change, uh, to have a president who ran on the notion of hope um, is really what we're here about. And what struck me um, in his, his speech the other night um, is he talked about um, the spirit. And, um, you know, in a different day, I'll, I'll just read you this uh, that I prepared. Uh, in a different day, the 54th took up arms to fight for change. With a musket and the bayonet, they earned freedom, equality, and unity. But the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They're spiritual. And our president-elect is calling for the spirit of service, sacrifice, patriotism, and responsibility. With these weapons, we can overcome evil with good and reach our potential as a great nation. Thank you. Thank you, 54th. You made this. You made this show. A couple of housekeeping notes. Um, first of all, um, the outstanding exhibitor. He's my type of guy. Last minute, minute man from my home uh, company. He said, I just made my, my uh, display an hour ago. He came in at 4.59 and 35 seconds, and he came up at the intermission and said, any turnpike authority people here today as he raised his musket? I said, no, they're not. Alan Pedro, come on up here. Lincoln Minuteman. <laughs> My type of guy. All right. Speaking of which, last minute, Larry, my technical director, Steve Russo, ladies and gentlemen, he says, John, can we do a technical meeting, like, not before, not at 10 of 5 and, and maybe a couple of days before the show? Steve Russo, ladies and gentlemen. Can somebody take a picture here for us? Thank you very much. Finally, if anybody wants to find out what we're doing, let me just pose here. More ham than Easter Sunday. <laughs> Meetup.com, the New England History Group. Meetup.com, join it. I'll, I'll sign you up. I'll let you know about if anybody wants to post one of their lectures, one of their trips. We're talking about going to the Boston Harbor Islands. Dave Smith can take us to a Civil War site and lead us on a tour. Stephanie said that she's interested in doing it this summer. Uh, we can do Freedom Trail, any historical monument, meetup.com, New England History Group, sign up, uh, and we'll get it going. If you have any ideas, anybody's making appearances, whether it's the 54th, whether it's the Historical Society of Watertown, uh, or Waltham Historical Society has a lecture, it's the meetup group. Finally, some close-up again. Uh, tomorrow is the tour for the historic, uh, for the Fowl House. Um, it's the nexus of the American Revolution. Log on to historicwatertown.org. Um, I'm going to be speaking on the great fires uh, of Watertown in March for them. Uh, also, special thanks to all of these people, um, historicnewengland.org, Mass Genealogical Council, again, Mike Brophy, uh, my brothers here, the Ancient Order of Hibernians, Division 14, uh, keep going, historicwatertown.org, Liberty Ride, Masher, did a fantastic job, uh, End Zone Militia next year, Joyce, Linda Perry, Civil War Roundtable, Lincoln Minutemen, uh, Lexington Historical Society, Jolly Rogues, Tori Taylor, thank you very much, the Murrays, um, Nara, uh, Derek Gunn, Yankee Magazine, Boston Globe, and Masha and Waltham Historical Society, Wayne and Sheila, 
Um, and all of these people. Oh, look at Harpoon Brewery made it again. Oh, we have to get a photo. And finally, um, I'm appearing at the uh, Weymouth Historical Society on Wednesday. The reason why it's very historical is because it's the 110 years almost to the day of the Portland Gale, which is a storm that took place in 1898. That's going to be at the Holbrook Homestead. And then finally, I was just wondering if we could have a, a reenactor photo here. Anybody in period garb, if you'd come on up here for a team shot, I'd really appreciate that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close with the national anthem. So again, if we could have anybody in period garb, if you could come up here for the, for the family shot. Uh, Mr. Mike Ryan, again. Oh, Mike, I want to thank you again for coming out here tonight. Mr. Mike Ryan, a uh, very talented man. Look at his biography on the uh, his historyfestival.org website. Uh, but if you're in period garb, if you could come on up, even come on up, Joyce, the Murrays. We're going to do a... Uh, this will be the post office shot. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> if you see these people... <laughs> And if anybody else wants to take a photograph. Here's Jim Murray, Jolly Rogues, Rabble Rousers. That's going up on the website. All right, great. Thank you very much. And finally, um, you know, as we enter a new era, uh, we usher uh, out a bad era in American history, and we usher in an era of hope. Um, let's not forget this great country that has its scars, and that may the wounds heal not only in this country but around the globe. I ask that you please stand for the playing of the national anthem of the United States of America. Which is, that's the 1812 overture, but we are standing. <laughs> 